Hello everyone, Mr. Vanzura here, and this is a video where we'll be going over our rhythm composition worksheet for our middle school students. At the top of your worksheet, you'll see a key, which gives you values for different notes, as well as a key for the time signature. So first, we'll go over the key for the notes that we know. Just as a quick review, you have a whole note, which is worth four beats, a half note, which is worth two beats, a quarter note, which is worth one beat, and we're going to skip over to our eighth note, which is worth half of a beat. And then a beamed eighth note is two of these put together. So we have half plus a half, which equals one. So our beamed eighth note is equal to one beat. These are the notes that you can use today. If you know some others, that's awesome. But we're going to stick to these just for today so that we can um, all have somewhat similar answers as we go through this worksheet. Now, the key also goes over your time signature. In the past, we've worked mostly with just keeping the four on the bottom, which means which note equals one beat. When it's four, it tells us that a quarter note equals one beat. The top number is what we've changed most of the time when we've used time signature before in music class. And the top number tells you uh, the number of beats in each measure. So in other words, if I have a four on the top, like I do in this first line here, that tells me that each of these measures, one, two, three, four, each of those four measures is going to have four beats in it. Now the bottom number, as we said, tells you which note equals one beat. Today we are going to be switching that up a little bit. Two weeks ago we went over time signature and you did a great job with those worksheets. Um, but I also said that in the future we'll be going over when we have eight in the bottom because some of us were a little confused by that, which is totally fine because we haven't gone over that yet. So today we're going to fix that and we're going to talk a little bit about what we do when that eight is on the bottom. Before we get to that though, let's just go back to what we know. So in 4-4 four, four time, that tells us that there are going to be four beats in each measure and a quarter note equals one beat. So that means that everything in this key is true. What I'd like you to do in each of these lines is for each measure come up with a different rhythm. So that means, for example, in the 4-4 four, four time, I need to fill and make sure that each note or each writ, uh, excuse me, each measure is equal to four beats. So measure one is equal to four, measure two is equal to four, measure three is equal to four, and measure four is also equal to four. You're going to need to find four different ways to reach four beats. So for example, when I use my whole note, whole note already equals four. So I know that that measure is complete because it equals four. But now because I've used that rhythm, I can't use it in any of the other measures. So in measures 2, 3, and 4, I need to find different ways to get to 4 beats. It's the same thing for your 3, 4 measure and your 6, 4 measures. Each of those you follow the key exactly and just make sure that you get to 4 different ways of finding however many beats you have. So in the 3, 4 measures, you're finding 4 different ways to get to 3 beats. So each measure needs to equal 3, find 4 different ways to get there. And finally, for my 6-4, you're finding four different ways to get to six beats. Now, you could repeat the same note in each line. So, for example, if I were to, in 3-4, use three quarter notes to get there, one, two, three. Just because I use the quarter notes here, that doesn't mean that I can't use quarter notes ever again in this line. It just means I can't use three quarter notes like I did for this rhythm here. So I could use a quarter note with an eighth and then another quarter note if I want, but I can't use the same rhythm that I had here. All right, now we're gonna go over into some new territory when we have that eight in the bottom. So when we have eight in the bottom of our time signature, that's going to tell us that an eighth note now equals one beat. So when we have eight on the bottom, an eighth note Oops, eighth note, not noi. <laughs> An eighth note now equals one beat. Now you might be asking, what does that mean? That just means that we're going to change the key that we have up here. So now instead of our quarter note equaling one beat, the eighth note is going to equal one beat. Another way that you can think about it is when you have eight on the bottom, you're going to double the value of each note. So when eight is on the bottom, it means that an eighth note now equals one beat. And because of that, you're now going to double the value of each note. So that means 
when I'm filling out my 3-8 time, instead of my uh, whole note equaling 4, it's now going to equal 8 because I need to double that value. Now, the 3-8 measure means that you have three beats in each measure, and the 6-8 measures, or the 6-8 line, means that you're going to be having six beats in each measure. So in your 3-8 and 6-8 times, whenever the 8 is on the bottom, you can't use your whole note because that's going to be too many beats. Remember, we're doubling each value here. So when our whole note now equals 8, that's too many beats for 3-8 and it's too many beats for 6-8. Your half note now equals 4 beats because we're going to double the value. So your half note now equals 4. You can't use it in 3-8 because that's too many, but you could use it in the 6-8 measures. For the 3-8 and the 6-8, I'd like you to do the same thing that you're doing for the 4-4, four, 3-4, four, four, and 6-4 measures. You're going to find four different ways to fill the correct number of beats. Again, you can repeat notes, so you can use um, a quarter note more than just in one measure, but you just can't use the same rhythm. Same thing for your eighth notes and um, for any other notes that you might use. So just as a review, when 8 is on the bottom, the eighth note now equals one beat, and you're going to double the value of each note. So this key is true for any time the 4 is on the bottom. When we switch to having 8 on the bottom, you need to change your key by doubling the value of all of these notes. So again, in 6-8 or in 3-8 time, whenever 8 is on the bottom, your whole note is now going to equal 8, your half note is now going to equal 4, your quarter note and beamed eighth notes now equal 2, and your eighth note now equals 1. And again, we know that because when the 8 is on the bottom, we know that your eighth note equals one beat. Now I know this is a lot to take in, so if you have any questions, you can either re uh, rewind in this video and go back to something that I explained, or as always, you can feel free to ask me any questions as you're working on these worksheets. Just as a reminder, what I'd like you to do for this worksheet is go through each line and fill in the correct number of beats in four different ways. So you cannot repeat the same rhythm in any of the four measures on that line. Each line is also different, so it has a different number of beats, so you also need to make sure that you're not copying from a previous line, because then that would be incorrect. Again, if you have any questions, you can feel free to reach out at any time. And now that we've gone over this, you can go to the next step, which is to fill out this worksheet. You can either submit it to me by saving this Cami file, like I did here, or you can print it and take a picture and send it to me that way. Or finally, if you're working remotely, then you can come in, uh, when you come in next to school, if you're a hybrid student, you can bring it in to me. Or if you're fully remote, then you can just send me a picture or send me your Cami file. All right, that is all I have in this video. Good luck, and as always, if you have any questions, please let me know.